Hello, and welcome to Tyler Talks, a new channel where I talk about all things I'm passionate about, like books, and movies, and that's about it. I don't have very many hobbies, and I am a very boring person. Today, we are talking about one of the most famous, if not the most famous, Japanese authors of all time, Haruki Murakami. I've been looking at YouTube videos lately about Haruki Murakami, and I've noticed there aren't many videos about where new readers should start with Murakami. So I kind of want to put this together just to give people who are curious about Murakami and are clearly overwhelmed by the amount of books he's published, because as you can see, he has published at least, at least one book. I want to give them a place to start. My goal for this video is not to give you a definitive answer as to where you should start reading Murakami, mainly because there isn't one. But instead, based on my own personal experience, provide you a few different ways that could make Murakami's writing more accessible and less overwhelming. The few pathways that I provide here, others might disagree, and that's perfectly okay. I want this video to be kind of like a resource for anyone who's interested in Murakami. So if you personally have started reading Murakami in a different way, feel free to put in the comment section down below. Any answer is acceptable because I genuinely want other people to read his writings as much as possible. He is by far my favorite author, and I want anyone and everyone to get into his writing. So if you disagree with my pathways, completely okay. Put it in the comment section down below. I'll be reading them. And for anyone watching, if people do put in the comment section down below, go look, go give them some love. This is supposed to be a community. I want everyone to be accepted and welcomed because I think that's a better way to talk about books and to frankly talk about Haruki Murakami. So the first way that you can get into Murakami is the more standard chronological publication order. Now, there's a definitive appeal in reading Murakami's books in the order in which they're published. You get to see Murakami progress as a writer. You get to see his style, his prose, his major themes, his character traits, his narratives all develop with him. However, this is not necessarily the pathway that I would start with, and for a few reasons. The first is the copy that I have here, which is a double copy of Hear the Wind Sing in Pinball 1973, is not the most common book to find. Now, that's not saying you can't find it anywhere at a secondhand bookstore or even one of your local or larger chains or hell, even Amazon. But I shop at Barnes and Nobles and it took me a long time to find this copy. The second reason is I don't know if Hear the Wind Sing is necessarily a good indicator of what kind of writer Murakami is for the majority of his writing career. Murakami's first book, I like it, I think it's good, but it is slightly flawed, mainly because it is definitely the works of a new writer who is still finding his voice and still finding his style. Therefore, the Murakami that we have been reading for the past 30 years is not necessarily there in Hear the Wind Sing. For new readers who are interested in who Murakami is as a writer, I would not start with his very first book. Instead, the appeal of Hear the Wind Sing is already for Murakami fans. So you can go back and you can read his introduction as to how he got into writing. And you can see how he has very clearly progressed as a writer. Hear the Wind Sing is good but flawed. It's a little fragmented and it's a little scattered. It's still a very good book. I would recommend that Murakami fans check it out. But for new readers, I would say avoid this one until you have established that you like his writing style and you are a fan of his work. The second way to get into Murakami is a bit complex and takes a little bit of explaining, so bear with me. If you're new here and you aren't familiar with Murakami's writing style, he focuses mainly on the combination of realistic fiction with magical realism or surrealist elements. This basically means he writes stories set in the real world, but with fantasy or larger than life elements that seem weird and seem odd and seem like they don't make sense, but within his writings, they're treated as if they are another occurrence of a daily life, which can make it slightly unappealing for new readers, which I have found to be very interesting considering my favorite part of Murakami is his almost seamless blending of realistic fiction and surrealist elements. Therefore, the second way into Murakami is to break his writing up into two different styles. The first is realistic fiction, and the second one is a heavy emphasis on magical real and surrealist elements. If you are someone who likes realistic fiction, I would recommend two books of Murakami's. The first is arguably his most popular, Norwegian Wood. This is an all-time classic book, and this is well known outside of Murakami fans. This is just a popular book all around. If you are interested to Murakami, I would recommend you start here 
This is a good pathway into the type of characters and worlds that he knows how to build. Murakami is a master of establishing relationships and creating believable and dynamic relationships between people. If you are very curious about him and his realistic style of fiction, I would focus heavily on Norwegian Wood. The next book of Murakami that I recommend that is primarily set with realistic fiction is Colorless Sukuru Tozaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. Now, I'm aware many people aren't super high on this book. The consensus seems to be kind of like a lukewarm reaction. However, Colorless Sukuru Tozaki was my first Ruji Murakami book. And for some reason, I've read this one three times now. Throughout the past eight years that I've read it, this is my favorite Murakami, which I get is a very controversial opinion considering his backlog of incredible writings. But for me, there's something very human about this book, and I think this is one of Murakami's best character writings. Personally, I would recommend either Norwegian Wood or Kalura Sukuru Tozaki in his years of pilgrimage. If you want to take a more non-standard approach, read Kalura Sukuru Tozaki first, and then Norwegian Wood. But if you want to take the approach that most people have done, read Norwegian Wood first. It's arguably his most famous, and it's arguably one of his best. For me personally, if you want a true taste as to what Murakami is capable of, with blending realistic fiction and magical realism or surrealist elements, I would heavily recommend The Wind-Up Bird Chronicles. This is another one. This was actually my second Murakami book, and it was one that was slightly off-putting to me the first time I read it. However, when I went back and reread it after having gone through a lot more Murakami books, I found this one to be incredibly engaging and incredibly more enjoyable. This is also a very nice foot in the door for Murakami, mainly because it serves as a nice litmus test for whether or not you will like Murakami's more surrealist heavy writings like 1Q84 or Kafka on the Shore. If you are someone who is comfortable with magical realism, this is absolutely the book for you, as there are about 400 pages of this book that are almost entirely dedicated to aspects that are up to your own interpretation and more abstract elements of writing. I personally love this book. I want to reread it again shortly. But yeah, I would recommend this one ultimately if you want a combination of magical realism and realistic fiction. The third and final pathway into Murakami is actually based on my own personal recommendation. And it's not Color Sukuru Tozaki Nizir's Years of Pilgrimage, even though this was my first Murakami book, as I said earlier. Uh, I just want to provide a little backstory real quick before I give the final big answer as to what I think you should actually start with. I picked this book up on random when I was working at my old local library. And the only reason I picked it up is because I thought the cover was cool. And... That was about seven or eight years ago, and now here I am, um, as you can see, with a slight obsession with this man. Uh, he is my favorite author. I don't own any other books by any author like this. I own some other extra ones by like Lil' Catherine and stuff like that. But Color Sukuru Tozaki is not my recommendation, and I would not start with this one. Instead, I would actually recommend to start with The Wild Sheep Chase. Now, before some of my Murakami fans here tell me that this is the third book in a trilogy, I'm aware of that. I've read it. I've read the entire trilogy of the rat. I should clarify, Murakami's first three books are technically part of a trilogy of the rat, he calls it, with the, A Wild Sheep Chase being the third book in the trilogy. A Wild Sheep Chase is very non-connected to Hear the Windfall and Pinball 1973. I actually think this is Murakami at his purest form. This is Murakami at his tamest in his combination of realistic fiction and magical realism. The magical realism is there, but it doesn't overshadow the realistic fiction. Instead, it feels like a nice, natural extension of the world. And for new readers, I feel like the magical realism is there, but not overwhelming. The magical realism are just tangible enough to be understanding, but not abstract enough to be overwhelming. This is also Murakami as he starts to blossom into the writer. As Murakami says in his introduction to Hear the Wind Sing, Hear the Wind Sing in Pinball 1973, his first two books are more kitchen top novellas rather than full length novels. A Wild Sheep Chase is what brought Murakami into prominence. It's also the first time he really has started to develop as a writer. This is his first complete book and I would heavily recommend it to any new readers because I think it serves as a nice starting point for Murakami. If you are a fan of this book, you will enjoy the rest of his writings. I think it is as simple as that. This book is also relatively short. It's only about 350 pages long. And due to Murakami's prose and ease of writing style, those 350 pages fly by like a breeze. I know it's a more unconventional pick. Many of you would probably choose 1Q84. 
Norwegian Wood, Cack on the Shore. I think A Wild Sheep Chase is the perfect entry into Murakami. If you're a fan of this book, you will be a fan of his writing. If you're curious as to what you shouldn't start with, I'm going to get a little controversial here. I don't think you should start Murakami with 1Q84 or Kafka on the Shore, mainly because of a few reasons. The first is 1Q84 is an absurdly long book. The book stands at about 1,200 pages right now, and combine that with a heavy emphasis on magical realism and taking its time and taking it slow with meditative scenes and characters practically doing nothing for large sections of the book, Ultimately, that serves to enhance the ending of the story, but for new fans of Murakami and people who haven't read that book yet, it can seem like five, six hundred pages in, nothing's happening, and that's kind of the point. I don't think that's a nice entry point because I think you're going to get overwhelmed, and I think you're going to get slightly burnt out and let down with his endings and how he concludes stories and his natural progression of characters. I don't recommend 1Q84. That can be your second one. That can be your third one, but I don't recommend it to be your first. The second one I don't recommend is Kafka on the Shore, mainly because of how heavily that deals with surrealist elements. The first time I read that book, I was kind of very confused, and that's after having read five or six Murakami books. Then I went and reread it after having gone through almost his entire catalog, and it seems to make more sense to me now. There's still stuff where I'm like, I gotta piece stuff together. But Kafka on the Shore is probably on the far end of the spectrum of his surrealist genre. The third and final one I would not start with is not because of any similarities to 1Q84 or Kafka on the Shore, but I would not start with Dance, 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 mainly because that's a direct sequel to A Wild Sheep Chase, and having just recently finished Dance, 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 you can't read that book on your own, considering many things that happen in that tied directly to A Wild Sheep Chase. I would probably read A Wild Sheep Chase first, and then a Dance, Dance, Dance right after, mainly because I, I think those two books are frankly phenomenal. So that's what I would recommend with Murakami. These are not definitive answers or not definitive ways you should start with his writing. Instead, these are just recommendations. If you don't agree with my choices, that's completely fine. Put them in the comment section so everyone else can have more resources to start reading Murakami. The more people that read his books, the better. I think he's that talented of a storyteller. He is by far my favorite author, and I really hope you enjoy his books. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any recommendations as to what I should watch or read, or that's about it, again, I'm a very boring person, put in the comment section down below along with your preferred reading order, and I will take a look at that, and I'll try to get to some of them if any of them pique my interest. Lastly, I wouldn't have been able to make this video without the encouragement of support of my two friends, uh, Mark, who has his own channel, which I'll put in the description down below, and Matt, who also has his own channel, which I'll put in the description down below. They both also talk about books. Mark talks more about classic literature, and Matt has talked about Great Gatsby and Julius Caesar and kind of Roman culture. They're both fantastic channels. I'll put their comment in the section down below. Go subscribe. Go let them know I sent you. Lastly, we also have a movie podcast. Surprising, I know. But Mark, Matt, and I have a podcast called Film Front. We basically spend one day a week talking about movies. That's one movie per episode. We talk about really everything from the classics to new movies to really everything. Our channel link will also be in the description, and you can find us on really any podcast platform. Uh, that's also kind of the same thing. Go to the Film Frauds channel, subscribe, let us know who sent you and who's cooler, and vote for your favorite film fraud as long as it's me, uh, because if you like Murakami, I should be your favorite. That's a challenge or a threat. Thank you to everyone for watching this video, and I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you.